Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending the first of a series of webinars that we're going to call the Nexternal Academy. My name is Ty Nunez, and I am the Customer Success Manager here at Nexternal. And today we're going to discuss creating product pages that sell. Now, there are a lot of features and functionalities centered around creating products, but I'm going to try to keep this webinar to about 30 to, to 40 minutes. Um, essentially, what I'm going to cover are ways for you to utilize some of the basic functionality within Nexternal to create more effective product pages. While I wouldn't necessarily call these uh, advanced features, they do take a bit more effort than just simply adding the basic content. However, if you do take the time to implement these practices, I have no doubt that you'll take your product presentation up a few notches, which will ultimately help you increase your conversion rates. Now, one of the main reasons we decided to start the Nexternal Academy was due to what I was finding when our merchants participated in the customer success program. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the customer success program, Nexternal has recently started offering a complimentary program where you as the merchant and I can work together to help you devise some strategies on how to better utilize the Nexternal e-commerce platform. We also discuss your website practices, marketing strategies, and, and really just your, your business as a whole. Um, after our meeting, I'll provide you with detailed recommendations that I think can help your business improve. So if you haven't participated in the customer success program, make a little note to uh, email me after we're finished and we can schedule an introduction meeting. Um, but during the meetings that I have had, I've, I've noticed that merchants were making the same mistakes over and over and over again when creating their products. So I'm hoping that today's webinar will reemphasize the importance of building powerful product pages. Um, so with all that said, there's a lot of ground to cover. So let's jump in and get going. I'm going to move quickly. However, we will have a video available to you to view afterwards if necessary. So let's get going. Creating a basic product in Nexternal is, is very easy. All you need is a name, a category, you give it a, a brief description, a price, throw in an image, and it's online. However, in today's extremely competitive world of online sales, that's just simply not enough. Um, since most of you are Nexternal clients and you're familiar with Nexternal, I'm not going to go over this the basic setup. What I have done is created a sample product that I feel looks uh, very powerful, that uses a lot of the functionality built into Nexternal and has a very solid presentation. Uh, so I'd like to show you how I set this up and some of the strategies that I used. So we will go into that specific product and, and click edit here. Now, the first part I want to focus on is the long description. We all know that when shopping online, most customers, they don't read, they simply skim. Now, this doesn't mean that you can skip over adding a long description. Uh, it's still extremely important to have a detailed and powerful description. However, uh, you can do a few things to enhance that description to make it more appealing to the visitor and encourage them to take the time to read what you have to say. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that I'm utilizing some color. Now, I've put some text in red, but what this does is this draws the eyes. Now, like I said, I use red here, but what you may want to do is just utilize a color that is that kind of contrasts with the, the basic colors that you have on your online store already. Um, what you don't want to do is, is just have it blend in. So the use of colors can, can draw the eyes into what it is that you're saying and then hopefully encourage them to uh, read a little bit more. Um, the next portion to that is going to be utilizing emotional triggers. And so you can see here, I've, I've used the statement, crush those drives by your buddies. And, you know, anyone who's a golfer knows that, you know, some of the most important parts of, of playing golf is, is being able to hit it further than your buddy. So, you know, I've kind of taken that and, and utilized that to my benefit to hopefully spark an emotional trigger with the shopper, get them to um, read a little bit more of, of what I have to say. The next thing you can do is add bold and bullet points to the text. And you can see I've, I have that here, but it's a little easier to uh, understand by looking at the actual product page itself. 
So again, with the rule of thumb that that shoppers will not um, typically read, um, what we want to do is encourage them to skim and make it easy for them to skim the page to get the information that they want. So you can see here that I've done some bullet pointing and I've also added some bold within those bullet points to kind of highlight some of the keywords in the description. Now, this takes a little bit more time and obviously a little bit of strategy, but you know what it does is it does encourage the person to take a look and helps them skim the page a little more effectively. So if, you know, if I'm looking for forgiveness in my golf drives, I've highlighted that term um, exceptional forgiveness, and now the shopper is actually going to read why. Um, additionally, they may continue just to read everything I have to say since I've, I've highlighted that one point. So um, utilizing bold and bullet points is a good way to break up kind of that consistent read of, of text um, and, and say the things you need to say a little bit more effectively. The next thing you can do is utilize images. Now, I have a, a video embedded into this description and we'll talk a bit about that. However, breaking up the long description with images is another way to draw the eyes in, um, kind of uh, emphasize certain points with, with imagery, and then encourage the shopper to read a bit more based on what they're seeing from the image perspective. So if this image here, uh, kind of sparks my interest, I'm more inclined to actually read the text below it um, to see what that image is trying to convey. Now, taking it a step further would be the use of video. And we're going to get into video specifically a little ways down the road in the webinar. However, utilizing video in your long descriptions is extremely effective and it is becoming very, very common for merchants to use video, whether uh, it be on the product pages themselves, on specific video pages, or um, even replacing images with video. So I do recommend utilizing video and, and encourage putting those in your long description. Now, let me show you how I did some of this. There's a couple ways you could do that. Now, Nextrunal has what's called a WYSIWYG editor, and this allows you to do things like, you know, highlight some text and make it bold or, you know, italicized or underlined, for example. Um, this is, in case you don't know HTML or you don't, you're not comfortable using HTML, using the WYSIWYG editor is a nice way to get some of those effects without having to know HTML. Um, if for some reason your WYSIWYG editor is not turned on, you can do so by going to settings, scrolling down to uh, Boolean options and clicking edit. Then you'll see in the third column here, WYSIWYG editor. So by simply just turning that on, you will then see the WYSIWYG functionality and you'll be able to enhance those long descriptions uh, pretty easily. Um, there's a couple things to note to here when utilizing the WYSIWYG. Um, one, you can do it two different ways. You can kind of, like I said, highlight something and change the information. Or two, you can utilize the raw code. So even if you, you know, maybe maybe you're comfortable using HTML to a certain extent, you can add in some HTML or jump back and forth between the HTML and the actual WYSIWYG editor itself. So uh, turn on the WYSIWYG, it'll help you enhance those long descriptions. Um, the next section I want to talk about is the uh, custom tabs section. And you can kind of see this on the product page here. Nextrunal by default, we have tabs for the long description, the customer reviews, the customer questions. Um, if you're using specifications or have pricing details, we'll include those tabs as well. We've recently um, integrated the ability to actually add custom tabs to your product pages as well. So you can see here, I've created custom tabs for product videos and for the more Im info and images and setting these up is, is very easy. So what you're gonna do is on that product page, you're simply going to give the tab a label. So more info and images or product videos. Then you're simply going to enter the content just like the long description. So you can see here in the videos section, I've added two YouTube videos. And in the more info and images section, I've added some more text and some additional image information. So pretty straightforward on adding those in its, in its instance. So the second you add in those custom tabs, they're going to be on the page and your customers will be able to use that content. Um, these custom tabs are great for uh, use for videos, again, for additional specifications, for charts, for sizing charts. That, um, that's something that a lot of people uh, like to have if they're in the apparel industry. 
Um, they're also good for links to PDFs or downloads or anything like that that um, just may not fit within that long description. A lot of merchants make the mistake of, of really extending that long description, putting that content and stretching it down the page. Well, you know, you just kind of want to break that up a little bit. Um, if someone sees a, a big, huge paragraph of text, they're a lot less likely to kind of go through the process of reading that information, and they may end up skipping over some important pieces of, of data that they need. So utilize the tabs. It's a good way to highlight some important points. Now, you've seen me um, brush over a, a few videos uh, so far, and you can see in my long description here, uh, I'm using a video, and then also in the product tab section, I want to show you how easy it is to grab a video and insert it into your product pages. A lot of people get paralysis by analysis when it comes to videos because they think it's so difficult to use and, and it takes so much time. But, but truth be told, it's so easy to use video nowadays that um, I, I highly encourage its use. And um, let me show you again how easy it is just to grab that video and put it on your product page. So this is actually the video that I use in the long description for the Titleist driver. Um, what you're going to do is after you upload your video on YouTube, you can simply just go to share. You can click on embed. And here you're going to get the code. You just copy the code. You're going to get the code necessary to insert that video into, let's say, your long description or into one of the product tabs. So you grab the snippet of code, you go into your long description. Let's say we go to the end of the code here. We paste that into the long description. And now it's on the page. You actually have two listed here, but you can see it's now on the page. So that's how easy it is to grab a video from YouTube and embed it into your long description. Sure, it might take you some time to come up with some video content, but once you have that content and you publish that to YouTube or uh, one of these other uh, video hosting channels, it's very easy to grab that video and insert it on the page. One little tip when adding video to your product pages from YouTube is to remove the related videos that might potentially show after your video has run. And you've, you've likely seen this before if you've watched a YouTube video after the video is done playing. You'll see some related videos and next thing you know you've, you, you've spent two hours watching video after video after video. Well, in the retail world that doesn't work so well. You don't want people clicking through to, let's say, competitors videos, for example. So um, what you want to do is add a little snippet of code to the embed code that will disable that related uh, video process. And you can do that by simply um, adding this little tag to the end of the YouTube URL. So you can see here's here is the embed code we grabbed from YouTube to embed on our product page. We just need to add this little piece here and it'll disable those related videos from showing. So be sure to add that and it'll kind of clean up the process on your store. The next component I'd like to discuss when it comes to creating effective product pages are the images. And, and this is a big one. Um, when it comes down to it, the images are really the primary component that will sell your items. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen merchants that, that don't invest the time necessary into their images and then they wonder uh, why are sales so low or you know, why people are not buying their products at all. Um, I've also seen merchants who will stress for months to make sure that their website design, their logo, even the background color or button colors are all perfect. But when it comes to products, they throw up a, a mediocre image and think that's uh, simply enough. Um, again, I mean, images are the primary component that sell your items. So let me show you a few ways to enhance those images and how they're presented to the shopper and, and give you a better opportunity to sell your products. Um, one of the main ways to do that within an external platform is by using multiple images or what we call the image gallery. Um, you can see here we are in the images and audio section. You can um, what you're going to want to do instead of, of uploading a main image, you're going to want to utilize the image gallery by by clicking here and then you're going to determine how many images you're going to use. And this is going to be the various views. So let's say uh, you have five different views like 
we have on this page, you're going to enter five for the number of gallery images. Um, you can also assign a large image to each one of those gallery images. So if you have five different views, you're going to have five main images and then five corresponding large images of that particular view. So we're going to go ahead and say five gallery images and then utilize the uh, image gallery for the large image as well. Um, we'll go ahead and click next. Now I've already, I'm using a, a pre-populated product and I've already uploaded my images. So you can kind of see here, those images are already in play on my store. However, um, when you come to this page and you go to the gallery images section, you're just going to see the option to upload those files. So you'll, you'll see just a, a bunch of these choose file options. Now, when creating the gallery image, you're going to technically, you can upload anywhere from three to five images. You're going to have the image gallery image or kind of the mini thumbnail that's on the page. And that's this image here. You're going to have the main image, which is the primary image that displays on the page. So this, this image here. Then you're going to have the large image and that's the, the blown up view, the, the large uh, image that the uh, shopper would see when they, they mouse over, zoom over, or click that view enlarged uh, image link. So uploading uh, three different images, uh, again, you can upload some for your mobile as well, um, but primarily if you have five different views, in theory, you're going to have um, three images for each. So you're going to be uploading 15 different images uh, into the external system. Once you've uploaded those images, you simply click finish and you have the image gallery set. Now, there's a lot of strategies that come along with using the image gallery. You want to make sure the images are all a consistent size so you don't have any kind of a fluctuation in the screen. Um, also, just you know, make sure they have the same background and look professional. So uh, there's a few different tips that, that go along with that, but I definitely recommend utilizing the image gallery to display your images um, because it's just much more effective. You can also get very creative with the image gallery. Um, you don't just necessarily have to put you know, product images in there. You can do things like enhance those images by putting a banner over some. So get creative, put a banner in there, show um, size comparisons. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you're selling jewelry, um, put a quarter next to the ring that you're selling to give a size relation to what it is you're selling. Um, if you're selling gifting items, show the packaging that the, the gifting item comes in. So I may be more inclined to purchase the gift wrap if I know what that gift wrap looks like. Um, you Again, you, I have a promotion uh, overlay here. You can use free shipping. You can use 25% off. Um, this is just, I've just changed the image. So I've enhanced the image through Photoshop or a photo editing program to add that banner in there. Um, very easy to do if, if you have any Photoshop skills, but it's a good way to enhance that image. Um, I see a lot of merchants, what they'll do is they'll be offering free shipping or 25% off and they will put that promotion you know, down over here or, you know, up here in a banner. And, and that's great. You definitely want to do that. But when I'm shopping, my eyes are in this location. So utilize um, the, the space on the page to emphasize those promotions versus kind of tucking them in a corner and hoping someone sees them. So you can see that by using the image gallery, you can not only display multiple views, but you can better entertain the shopper and also encourage the use of, of some of your promotions. So uh, get creative with the image gallery, but at the very least, utilize it to show multiple views of your products. In addition to offering multiple views, you also want to offer large images. Now, you know, if you think about it, I don't think there's ever been a shopper who's who's come to your online store and said, boy, I just I just wish this image was smaller. You know, for the most part, most shoppers want to see an enlarged image. I actually when I shop online, um, I typically will click the, the view enlarged image uh, almost instantly. So Nexternal offers a, a few different methods for displaying a large image. And you can see here on this screen, we are, are offering the, the, zoom, the zoom option. And I can show you here. And that's just simply if you mouse over the item, you're getting a, an enlarged detailed view of the product. Now, this is what sells. I mean, in, the, in most cases, this image that I'm displaying here is, is bigger than the real life model. And so I'm seeing a lot of the, the intricate details of this product that will help encourage me to make that purchase. 
So letting shoppers see an image that is as big as possible is, is always a good practice. And I highly, highly recommend uploading the largest image you could possibly get onto the page. Um, let me show you how to set up those large images. Again, if you're utilizing the gallery image, you're just going to upload a large image here, but there are several different ways you can display that large image. Um, just navigate to layout here. You're then going to go to main layout, once you're inside of main layout, you'll scroll down to products and then you'll see the product detail section. Um, here you can see the image enlarge method and you can utilize a pop-up, which um, some, a lot of people actually use. It's the view enlarged image uh, link that's below the main image. You click on that, it opens up the image in a new window. There's the zoom atop the main image. This allows you to kind of mouse over the top of the image and it'll show you a large, uh, an enlarged view right on top of the, the main image. And then there is the separate zoom window, which is what I was using on the driver. And that shows that separate window just to the right of the product, uh, like you see here. Um, I prefer this one. Uh, it just, it kind of, it's a good way to kind of um, see where you're mousing over at the same time, uh, getting that view. It kind of uses the the left and the right side, uh, or excuse me, left and the right eye to view it. And, and to me, it's just a lot more comfortable. Um, and then the last one is a zoom lens. And this is just a, a way to kind of mouse over the product. It'll show a circle kind of like a magnifying glass right over top of the main image there. So a couple different ways to display the large image, but really any way you do it, it is highly, highly recommended that you utilize a large image to give the customer the, the largest possible view uh, that you can provide. We've discussed the long description. We've spoken about the custom tabs. I've kind of driven home the point about video and Im imagery, but there's also some features, again, that most merchants kind of skip across that I, I wanted to go over as well. And, and this next one is another one that is uh, a, a big feature and something that shouldn't be looked past. Um, if you jump back into products here, uh, we're then going to go into the product. We'll uh, click edit here and then click next. And what we're going to discuss are the search engine options. You can kind of see that here. Now, this is something that a majority of our merchants, they, they look right past. Now, the good thing is that Nexternal will automatically add search engine content if you don't. Um, however, the content that we add is very minimal. We basically will give you, um, we'll add the product name and the name of your company. And really, that's, that's just not enough for these fields. Um, what are these fields really quick for people who are, are just not comfortable with, with search engines or some of the terminology used? Um, I, I wanted to explain what the title tag, the image alt tag, and the meta description are. So I, I've just executed a quick search for that Titleist 915 driver, and it's pretty straightforward. So what we're looking at here is the title tag. What we're looking at below it is the meta description. And so basically this is giving the person who's executing the search the title of the page that they may click through to. And this is giving them a description of that page as well. So these are actually two very important pieces because it not only tells the search engines what the page is about, but it tells the searcher what the page is about and encourages them to click through or even discourages them to click through. Um, really, a lot of uh, merchants, they ask me, you know, what should I put in for these fields? What what do I put in for the title tag, the image alt tag, and the meta description? Well, the answer is there is really no answer. I can't tell you exactly what to put into these fields. You know, search engine optimization is an art and there's really no exact science to it. Um, additionally, every business is different. So um, what works for you may not work for uh, someone even in the same industry. So what I can tell you is that if you take your time and add good, solid content, you can't really go wrong. Um, you can also change this content if you find that it's not working uh, to your advantage. Um, you may need to do some research or hire someone to assist you with this process or um, hire, hire someone to optimize your pages. But again, 
you know, don't look past these fields. Uh, if you want to add something in there yourself, go in and look at what um, some of your top competitors are doing. Or again, you know, maybe even go to Amazon and, and purchase a book on the topic. But but really, there's a lot of information on how to use these fields and there's a lot of strategies on how to use them effectively. Um, some tips that I can give you for uh, for these fields and specifically, let's say, like in the title tag, you want to um, utilize some buzzwords. And what I mean by that is you can see here, I've put in like low price and free shipping. Now you can see on these pages here, they're not doing really anything like that. So if you're looking at this Titleist, you know, this is Titleist.com. So maybe they feel they don't have to get overly creative with their title tags. But if I'm a merchant competing against title tag, I want to put, or excuse me, against Titleist, I want to put something in that title tag that will encourage the shopper to come to me instead of Titleist Direct. So I may want to enter free shipping or, or low price or um, you know coupon code, something to encourage that person to click through. You can kind of see some of these titles here. The word review is a big one. People like to read reviews when they're buying these types of items. So this person has included the word review in their title tag. So um, get creative on how you, uh, on the content that you enter into those title tags and you're gonna see better results. Now, when it comes down to the image alt tag, this is the text that is used to describe the image that you're using for that particular product. So basically image alt tag is the alternative tag for the image. Um, when you upload an image, typically from a digital camera, or let's say from you know, your computer directly, it may have a file name like you know, dc1000.jpg or you know, uh, instead of Titleist, you're putting you know, 915.jpg. Well, that's not very descriptive text. And so what you want to do is add some more descriptive text to help um, the search engine pick up and uh, generate results for that particular image. So the image alt tag is a good way to generate some traffic based on the description of the image itself. So search engine options do not skip over these features. They are very important. You can do this not only for your products, but you can also do it for the categories as well as the storefront itself. So take some time, enter in those search engine options. You can do all of this with the import and the export file. So um, you know, maybe export all of your product data out, update all of the search engine options in the Excel file, then upload that data back into Nexternal to help save a little bit of time. But again, do not skip over these fields. We've discussed some of the major components that I feel you should be utilizing to create effective product pages. Um, I could spend an hour probably just going over each one of those sections, just a long description, the images and some of the search engine options. Um, but, you know, there are several other features I'd like to get to. And I want to just do kind of some quick fire. We're kind of coming to the end here and, and we're getting close on time. So I want to fire off a few more features that you should be utilizing. I'm not going to go into them in depth, but I do want to take just a brief second and point these features out and make sure that you have these features turned on as well. Um, the first one that we're going to discuss are the reviews. And reviews are an extremely important piece of information when it comes to shopping online. So now that, that um, shoppers have a, a, a plethora of knowledge right at their fingertips through smartphones and mobile devices, um, having reviews is extremely important because they're going out and they're looking for that information. Um, it's rare that people purchase online without looking for some type of feedback on that product um, before they hit the buy button. And really the last thing you want them to do is go looking for that information somewhere else other than your online store. So turn on your product reviews, make sure you have them on and you can kind of see here, having that information on the page is, is just much more powerful for you and, and it increases your likelihood that they're gonna find that review they're looking for and then make that buying decision. Um, the last thing you want the shopper to do is to leave your page to go find that information, potentially find that information through a, another uh, vendor and purchase from them. So activate product reviews. You can even you know pre-populate these product reviews with some of the feedback you've already received, but get this information on the page. Uh, it'll definitely pay, play dividends. Um, also having this information on, on the page um, 
serves search engine purposes as well. So these are this is rich content. Google loves product reviews and will include them in the search engine results page. So um, get reviews turned on and you'll see some uh, benefit from that. Now, once you have reviews turned on, I recommend utilizing the review reminders feature. And review reminders, this is just a, a way to automatically um, remind your shoppers to leave a review for that product. So what you can do is you can set up the number of days that you want to wait until that automated email is sent. So here we got five days, you put in 10. Um, so basically in 10 days, what would happen, an email would come out saying, hey, did you like your purchase? If so, click here to leave a review. Um, this will take them back to your website to submit that review. So um, turn on reviews and then utilize review reminders to automate the process of asking for a review. So um, great feature there and, and you need to have that turned on. Um, in, related, in relation to that, you also have product questions and this is another on-page element that could be a determining factor between the shopper buying something and leaving your page to go find the information that they need. And product questions, they show up right next to reviews. Um, if you use them effectively, they can be a very valuable resource. You can even pre-populate the content with some useful information. So you can see here, this shoppers asked the question, does this driver come with a head cover? You know, that kind of pointed out to me, I did not include that image in my image gallery. So what I did here is I responded, I said, absolutely. And here's a picture of the head cover. I was able to insert that picture using just a, a little bit of HTML. And now we have an effective Q&A on the page. So what might happen in this case is, again, that shopper could potentially leave, go execute a search for the Titleist 915D head cover, um, find an image uh, through another vendor and ultimately just end up purchasing from them. So I've eliminated that possibility by addressing some of the product questions right on the page. Questions, obviously very easy to set up. You simply just go to questions, click setup, and check allow product questions. Now both questions and reviews, you can edit that content prior to publishing the information on the page. So you have a lot of control over that. You don't have to worry about getting um, uh, improper feedback or things that kind of go against your, your business. The next feature I want to talk about, another e-commerce uh, fundamental is related products and related products are something that it's just e-commerce 101 you really and, and business 101 for that matter when you sell somebody something or you have a product page you should be trying to sell them as much as possible so this is the upsell this is your upsell and cross sell opportunity so you know you may take someone who is there just to purchase one particular item and sell them five items, you know, give them a reason to purchase multiple items. You know, obviously you have, you know, if you have free shipping promotions and you can offer particular products that kind of nudge that person over the top of that uh, shipping threshold, um, you want to do that with related items. So showing those related products on the page is a good way to increase the multi item purchase. And then setting up related products is extremely easy. All you need to do is just simply go to products. You can click on the product name. Scroll down to related products. You can click add and we're just going to add one in this case. Select from the drop down list. Hit finish. Reload this page. And you'll see the related items now there. So very easy to add those related items. If you have a, an extensive catalog, you can utilize our import files to import related products. So that might save you a little bit of time and, and clicks by um, utilizing that file. But get related products on the page. It, it definitely, definitely will help out and make these product pages more effective. Um, while we are on the product page, there's another topic here that a lot of customers don't have turned on just yet, but it's the social networking icons. Now, merchant or excuse me, shoppers are becoming um, they, they expect to see social networking buttons on your online store now. And really, by not having these these things turned on, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. There's there's really no reason why you shouldn't have them turned on. Even if you think your customers are, are not the social networking type, 
you're wrong. Um, the numbers about social networks really do not lie. The odds are if anybody who comes to your website is going to have a social profile. So give them the opportunity to like that product, to pin that product, to you know tweet that product, whatever that might be, whatever their choice might might be. Um, give them the opportunity to share that. That's, that's marketing and, and advertising and word of mouth advertising that that can be extremely effective. So turn those features on. Make sure you you have those buttons available to your customers. Um, now I know they're you know if you're selling straight straight business to business, it, it may not play in. But for the most part, you need to have these features enabled. Um, now an external takes it a step further with the what we call the the like and save discount or the like and save feature. What this allows you to do is incentivize someone for actually clicking that like button. So if I like this driver and I publish it to my social profile, you can see here I'm given a discount instantly. And this is an, an, this is an awesome tool. And, and you think, you know, I'm, uh, I'm selling a, a high ticket item here. Um, I may have five, 600 friends on my social network. So by clicking like, I've potentially pushed that product in front of, you know, 600 people. And really it only cost uh, a couple bucks for the merchant. Um, and, and that's that's cheap advertising. That's cheap word of mouth advertising. And you can alter that amount that's being used there. But the like and save feature is a very, very nice way to encourage people to share that product on their, their favorite social network. So turn that feature on, turn on the, the social networking icons and you know, give yourself the opportunity or give your shoppers the opportunity to spread the word about your products. So let's jump back into the order management system here and I can show you how to set up that sharing discount uh, really quick. Now you can do it two different ways. You can set it at the settings level, which would then apply that to um, all of your products at the same time. So you go into settings, you go to compatible software and click edit. Once inside of compatible software, you will scroll down to social networking and you'll hit preferences. And then once inside of preferences, you'll see the Facebook sharing discount. If you were to set $2 here, again, it would apply that $2, uh, that $2 like and save discount to all of your products. Um, but you can also do it on a per product basis. So you know, for some of your high ticket items, you may want to offer $2 uh, discount, but some of your low ticket items, you may want to alter that or, or utilize a percentage. Um, setting it at the product level is, is also really easy. You just simply click edit, scroll down and hit next. And then you'll see in the product override section, the sharing discount. So very easy to turn that on. I highly recommend turning that on. Um, it, it is a great way to, to allow your, mer or your shoppers to spread the word about your products. Um, while we're on this page, I also want to show you the email addenda. Now, if you're familiar with the, the email addenda, what um, when, when someone purchases a product, external by default sends out uh, various emails, the order confirmation email, the shipped email, the, the update email. Um, we will send out an email notifying the customer of the status of their order, let's say. Now, at the settings level, you have the ability to add some information to those standard emails. So you can say, hey, anytime someone orders, add this little snippet of information to the, uh, the order confirmation email. And, and there's various reasons for doing that, but you can also do it on a per product basis. And this is something that a lot of uh, merchants look right past. Um, doing it on a per product basis has some advantages because you can actually utilize the email addenda to um, promote specific um, items related to the product that was just purchased. So. Let's just say, for example, I purchased the, the Titleist driver, obviously means I'm a golfer, I'm going to need golf balls. So what you may wanna do is include some promo text on that shipped confirmation email that offers me a coupon to come back and purchase. Now, you think to yourself, well, I could probably do that through an email marketing campaign, and you're right, but this is actually targeted to a specific product. It's also included in the shipped email. Now. If you shop online, you know, one of the, the, the emails you look forward to the most is, is the shipped email. You know, you're going to open that email. You're going to click track your package. You're going to see when your package is going to arrive. So you're going to have you're likely going to have a much higher 
open rate and click through rate from that order confirmation or shipped email than you might have from those generic marketing emails. So, you know, utilize that opportunity to uh, encourage the shopper to come back and purchase some products. So I recommend utilizing the um, product specific email addenda to get the shoppers back to your, uh, to your store and buy more product. Um, the next section and actually the last section we're going to uh, talk about here are the subscriptions. Now, Nextternal recently released the ability for you to offer products uh, on a, excuse me, offer subscription products. Um, so what you can do is you can, you can simply next to any product, you can click on the subscription option here. You can then determine how many subscription options you are going to have. And then you can alter the, the settings for each one of those subscription options. This is an awesome tool. Reoccurring revenue is, is just, it's a great way to automate uh, additional orders and generate that reoccurring revenue. Um, the merchants who have actually used this feature so far have given us significant praise on how the functionality works. Um, they've seen it with other providers, they've, they've tried it with other providers and how Nexternal does it is definitely one of the best. So if you have products that you can um, that you can utilize a subscription uh, functionality on, I definitely recommend activating this feature. It's a great way to increase your, your order volume um, without having to do a lot of work after that initial order is placed. So, um, and in speaking of that, how Nextternal handles that is, you know, once, let's just say every month, the first of every month you have your, your subscriptions being generated, Nextternal simply going to um, automatically create those orders for you. So you log in on the second, you're going to see, you know, a hundred or 10 new subscription orders at the top of your, the list of orders to process for that day. So it's a great tool. It's a great way to, um, to get some reoccurring revenue. So if you have any products that you think that you, uh, might be able to um, offer on a subscription basis, I recommend turning this on and uh, giving yourself the opportunity to generate that reoccurring revenue. We've discussed some great features today. Uh, again, there's a, a ton of information when it comes to uh, products and a ton of features that you can you can turn on to uh, have more effective product pages. Um, you know, in closing, I just kind of want to leave you with a few thoughts. Um, you know, the average conversion rate for online stores typically uh, teeters around two percent, and really, when you factor in mobile, it, it can go even lower. Um, now, there are some factors that are just completely out of your control that may contribute to your store not converting sales. However, don't let your product presentation be one of them. Um, we, we provide you with, with a lot of tools to really create effective product pages. So give yourself the best opportunity to convert shoppers into buyers. You know, Give yourself the best opportunity to win every visitor that, that comes to your store. Um, I thank you for joining me today. Uh, and please, if you have any questions uh, regarding this webinar or any of the information that, that we've gone over, um, feel free to email me or, or call me with those questions and I'd be happy to assist you. Um, if you need any training or you'd like to, to dedicate some time to a specific feature, contact your account manager and they would be happy to set up an appointment with you. So thank you again for your time and happy selling.